website, this part, uh, this live broadcast, which will be turned into a podcast as well. So um, I create, I started this and called it Food for Thought, um, Nourishment for Your Mind, Body and Soul, because I want to create inspiration and connection for anyone watching uh, to help them see new possibilities and opportunities and uh, maybe see past their blind spots. Um, it's the part, the uh, live is really about all the awesome people I've met on my journey um, that inspire me with their uniqueness, heart-centeredness and devotion to others. Uh, if you want, you can connect with these people. There'll always be a link in the description of how you can connect with them so they can assist you on your journey or transforming your life and business. Um, so I, briefly about myself, I'm Matt Love. Most of you will know me because you're live on my profile. I'm an internet presence mentor and consultant for conscious transformation specialists like Anna, who's with me today. For those who don't know what internet presence is, um, it's how, how you establish and grow your business on social media and search engines like Google and many other forms of digital marketing. Um, in brief, it's becoming and staying visible online. So you can connect with me at mattlove.business on my Facebook profile or on LinkedIn. But today's not about me. Today I am here talking to Anna Doria. Uh, Anna is an art therapist who helps people tell their visual story, release creativity and understand their emotions through highly enjoyable creative processes and mentoring. And I say that because I have done some courses with Anna and they've been incredibly um eye-opening is a good way to put it. So Anna, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. First, I want to thank you, Matt, for um, uh, you know choosing me to be your first guest. Um, I'm quite honored by it. I'm excited about this new project of yours. And I, you know, it's always heart-centered, so I think it's going to be amazing. Um, uh, I'm Anna. Um, I am an artist. I'm a Portuguese woman who spent the last 30 plus years in the United States and now uh, I've been back to my own country for a year to reconnect. I've been an artist all myself, um, all my life, um, and um, didn't always um, use it. Uh, didn't, took me a long time to actually assume myself as a full artist. Um, I've had a long life of uh, successes and failures, um, uh, and uh, I've decided in the last four years that this is what I want to do, um, and that's what I'm doing. I'm not only helping myself through my art making, I am making it available for other people to help themselves through it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. I mean... That is absolutely awesome and very true. They're helping a lot of people. Um, and it's amazing what these things can do. Um, creativity, whether you think you're good at it or not, enables you to balance the right and left side of your brain, making decisions a lot easier. Okay, so uh, let's get on with today. We came today to talk about um, a visual language. So what is a visual language, Anna? Well, we all have a visual language. In fact, every time we utter a word, we're making an image. <laughs> you cannot have a, a thought that you don't make a picture in your mind and other people who listen to you, uh, who hear you are making pictures in their mind as they're trying to understand what you're saying. Uh, what I do is uh, help people actually develop um, that visual language, become more conscious of what kind of imagery they're putting out into the world. Um, because what you put out is what manifests. And if we're not conscious of what we are saying and thinking and feeling uh, and making, um, then everything goes crazy and we're, we don't really have any control over our lives. Um, and we all want to have some kind of control of our lives. We all want to live the life that we uh, envision in vision. <laughs> so that's what I do. I help people figure out how do they communicate visually so that they're more effective um, in the world, in the way yeah. they present themselves. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really um, uh, important thing that we really don't think about is the fact that every time we have a thought, it 
brings a picture up in our mind and often we think it's the thoughts or the events that are maybe causing us to have a block or struggle or feel a certain way when actually it's often not it's what we're visualizing and what we're relating um the uh thought to in our yeah. minds yeah so and then that's something i really like helped me a lot actually when i met you and i started realizing that um, even with all my years of experience with uh, NLP and cognitive behavioral therapy as well, um, yeah, there was still plenty of pictures, you know, and it's like they say, the story we tell ourselves, and this is a vi <laughs> visual story, it's not just a word. So, um, exactly, yes, because whether we are uh, aware of it or not, we have a whole uh, world of imagery that lives in us and through us. Uh, some of it we create, but a lot of it we actually inherit. We inherit it from um, the family that we grew up in, the, the neighborhood we grew up in, the country we grew up in, the culture we grew up in. Um, we inherit um, imagery, and we're usually not very aware um, of, those, of that image um, language. So if you are able to understand it and explore it, um, then you have the power to actually choose what kind of imagery you project. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, and I think that is crucial, um, you know, to understand. So out of interest, how can it help you be better at pretty much anything you do in your life, but, you know, life and business, I think it can help both people in both aspects. Right. How does it do that? Well, I have um, one of my mottos is own your imagery, own yourself. You are much more effective um, in, in your life, living your life, if you actually own yourself, if you understand who you are and you own yourself fully without having to ask permission to be um, who you are. So if you can understand how you can build your own image, how you can um, un uh, harness uh, how you present yourself, how you um, communicate, then you are much more effective in the way that you act in the world. So for instance, if you, are a business person mm -hmm. your image is very important because it's the first thing that people encounter and your image is not just the way you look but the way you express yourself the way you uh, listen everything about you is the first thing that people see we we can't help it we are visual people even people who think they're not visual they are visual um, there was a, a study done on blind people, and they found out that blind people actually make images in their minds. So we cannot help but be visual. Uh, we might be uh, more inclined to do things physically, or we might learn things more auditorily, but we're always using our eyes. And if we harness that, even if it's not very natural for us to be visual people, if we harness it, we have one more tool to be effective. Um, and that's what I'm trying to uh, show people is that just play with it, just try different things. Like I try other forms of communication. Um, I try and play an instrument. Um, I move my, my body. I um, try to be aware of how I move my body through space. All of those forms of expression are important to explore because it allows us to be um, a more wholesome, a more complete person. And of course, much more effective. Yes, yeah. I mean, I'm one of those people that always felt that I wasn't very good at art. Um, we had a discussion about this the other day, and I think it's because um, initially when you learn art at school, they don't give you creative freedom. They they, call, they say, right, you've got to paint it for a face, and you've got to get all the proportions right, and you've got to learn. And although the uh, methodology and the techniques are really important, actually the freedom to 
pro pro produce something from your authentic self is really, really crucial. And as we've done some things together, I've really thought, actually, I'm good at art and I enjoy art. And um, yeah, we did a um, one of your courses, which is the Created Color Challenge, which was a, a, ch a small ch uh, one week challenge, wasn't it? And that really opened my mind to the colors I like and things like that. And it wasn't what I decided many years ago, which was interesting, you know? So I had this thing that blue was one of my favorite colors. Actually, I've realized I really like green. And green means <laughs> a lot more to me um, than blue does because we were relating emotions to the colors, weren't we? Which was really, really um, powerful um, challenge that we did. Yes, yes. Colors are really, really important for humans. Um, I, I just imagine uh, when in the beginning of the world, the beginning of Earth, when Earth was becoming what it is now, there was a point in time when plants started growing and they started flowering. Imagine what happened. Imagine how color all of a sudden transformed everything. And when humans came about, they were flooded with color everywhere. And color actually affects us emotionally. Uh, some people react to certain colors in a particular way, and they're not even aware of it. Um, so if you, if you explore that, which is, it's a really interesting um, uh, exploration uh, process to explore your emotional range of color, um, you become much more attuned to how you feel at any point in time. You can also use it to project a certain image, a certain feel. For instance, if you feel really comfortable in blue, mm -hmm. if you wear more blue and it makes you feel more comfortable, more confident, people will react to it in a different way. Um, if you like red, people will react to it in a different way too. So it's, it's really important to um, own ourselves in, in a visual way. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, actually, and interestingly, um, there's a few people watching live on Facebook. And Karen's commented, personally, I found that simply applying color to paper is very soothing. And yeah, it, yeah it's very true. I think, um, I think lots of people don't realize what creativity can do, releasing that logical thinking and releasing beliefs and just enjoying yourself um and so i mean that kind of leads us on to our next question which i think you've covered a little bit already and i'm going to just rephrase it slightly so how can you reach a new level of expression through art or how do you reach a new level of expression through art i think it's a slightly better question mm -hmm. um so one of the things that i found out in my journey as an artist uh was that um being an artist is less about knowing how to paint and how to draw and all of the technique and more about understanding what it is that you need to express. And to do that, you have to understand yourself. So I've taken quite a journey of understanding that what I put on paper, what I put on canvas has an inner meaning I am bringing myself out into the world as I make art. Uh, so I forgot, what was your question? <laughs> so yeah, how can you reach a new level of expression through yeah. art? So you're doing very so well, yeah. The way to do it is to really explore the way that you express yourself visually. Um, one of the things I do with my clients is I ask them to doodle and people get really, confused about doodling. It says, well, how do you doodle? Um, I, I don't know how to do it. I'm afraid to do it wrong. There's no way you can do it wrong because doodling is your very particular way to express imagery that's kind of in there, but you're not really sure what that is. So when you're using your hand with a pencil or a colored pencil or whatever, or with a brush, and you're just letting your hand express whatever is coming up for you things start coming start taking shape and you start seeing that there's a particular way that you guide the line 
there's a particular way that your lines express themselves. Some people are much more linear, linear, and they like to do straight lines a lot, and they do a lot of cross hatching. Other people like like me. I like circles and wavy lines, and that's the way I express myself. Once you get into that and you do it, you practice it for a while. Something interesting happens. The image that's inside you naturally comes out and you start recognizing and you start seeing that there's a kind of style that's your own. And to do that, you have to forget completely about how other artists do it. You cannot compare yourself to a Picasso or a Michelangelo or a Frida Kahlo or any artists uh, that we study, uh, that we see in museums and, and um, galleries. All of those artists, they did study other artists. That is part of the training because you're developing techniques and you're trying to figure out you know, what technique is uh, best for you. But all of those artists eventually left all of the copying and they focused on their own expression so that they could develop their own style. And that's what it's all about. To express yourself is to figure out your own style. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, my own experience of this, because we originally did this about a year and a half, nearly two years ago um, with a, on another course where we were doing some paintings. And I found that actually I really judged myself. Mm -hmm. That was limiting my expression. Because I remember saying to you, oh, this reminds me of the artwork I did at school. Well, there's one reason for that, because I've not done any art since I left school, you know. So how can I have got any more expressive or better? But worse than that, I'm going, that's no good, that's no good. And so it really helped me just express myself, really helped me just realise I put too much pressure on myself. I was hard on myself, you know. I was uh, still... I don't really judge other people, you know, as much as possible, but I was judging <laughs> myself, you know? And uh, yeah, it's definitely helped me um, become a freer person, become a less worried about that. We are where we are, so to speak. And I had all these things in my brain, except for about my creativity at the time. Um, so yeah, I found it uh, really, um, yeah, interesting. Actually, that leads on to uh, the next question, which um, is, um, Really, we kind of covered, but we'll do it anyway. So is there such a thing as being bad at art or are you actually just discovering uh, your unique, authentic self? Mm. Well, you just said it. Um, mm -hmm. No, there is no such thing as being at bad at art. Art is art. Everything is art. I actually had a, um, a teacher, a mentor mm -hmm. that once told me everything is painting. And I remember being very confused by it. <laughs> and then I went home and I, I started thinking about it. And I thought, but that's absolutely true because whenever you create something, whether it's painting or sculpting or singing or dancing, you are telling a story. Art making is about storytelling. So there is no way that you can make bad art. There is always someone who will appreciate your style of making art. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows, there's, there was a, a movie made about this woman who made pictures uh, with really big eyes. Um, and she became really successful. She, her art is in galleries everywhere. And I'm not sure if they're in any museums, but I wouldn't be surprised because she was so original in the way she was doing it. But a lot of people criticized her because it was kitschy, because it was too cutesy. Um, and uh, they were wrong because there's a lot of people who really appreciate her art. And so they bought it. <laughs> there's no such thing as bad art. Um, for, for instance, Bob Ross, when I was younger, I was very judgmental and I used to judge Bob Ross because I thought, oh, he's just, it's like painting by numbers. This means that this is not art. This is not high art. Um, and it wasn't until I, you know, 
came to terms with my own prejudices and, and that I was judging myself as I was judging others, that I realized the value of someone like Bob Ross. Bob Ross was passionate about the way he made art and he shared it. And in, in, as a consequence, there were so many people who were inspired by him and became artists themselves. Now, you don't need to become an artist. Mm -hmm. You don't have to become an artist. What you want is to use it as another tool to be yourself fully. Um, for instance, if you're a business person, if you know how to present things visually in an effective way, and that is personal, that is your own expression, you will be able to attract clients to you that you didn't before. Because there's a lot of people out there who are visual people who need your services, but they're not, may not be attracted to you because you're not presenting your, um, your courses, your, um, your wares in a way that attracts them. So it's just another tool. And like you said, Matt, Matt it helps you connect the two sides of your brain. And it also helps you connect your whole person because making art is a whole person um, activity. It involves your body, it involves your mind, and it involves your heart or your spirit. You know, yeah. intuition comes into play there. Absolutely. And I think um, one of the things that's um, really important, like you just said there, is connecting the left and the right brain. I mean, all, all through life, we really use the left brain and we think logically and often we can't actually solve problems logically we need to solve problems creatively and come up with creative solutions and so if we don't have this alignment then often we struggle to find an answer we'll go for the logical answer and we'll fail again and we won't whereas if we you know um often things like this put the problem you're trying to solve the answer you're looking for in the back of the mind and then just create freely with art you know with no goal it's not about people seeing it it's not about becoming an artist like you said it's just some relaxation it's using another part of your mind and the answers come you know it's very powerful and it's about owning yourself fully too because when you're expressing yourself mm -hmm. that way without any judgment you're learning about yourself too and the more you learn about yourself, the more you own yourself and the more you show up authentically in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, the, the, I think many people overcomplicate, for example, being an entrepreneur as having to do so many things, learn marketing, learn sales, do all these things, even do what I do, create an online presence. Actually, step one is being your authentic self and showing yes. up. Yeah showing up and talking to people and being ready to learn and making that heart-centered connection with other people is is step one you know before you try and do anything else that's what it's all about it's the only way you can get the information find out who likes you who you can help and all these things is connecting with real people as your authentic self yeah i wanted to mention um uh, there's a, there, I think there's a lot of people who think about um, making art, being an artist, sort of a selfish way of being, kind of self-absorbed. And that's, the, you know, I, there's plenty of self-absorbed artists out there. <laughs> I'm not contesting that. However, what I, the way I see art, I see art as a gift. Mm. For me, it's a gift. It's a gift I give to myself to allow myself to express myself any way I want to. But it's also a gift to others um, in, in many ways. It can be, you know, you paint a really beautiful picture and you uh, gift it to a friend. That gift has more meaning to that friend than anything you go buy at the store. Mm -hmm. Even if it's, you know, it, you don't think, ah, this is no Michelangelo, it doesn't matter. If you offer something that is from you, that you created, 
it has a whole lot more meaning than anything else you can buy. So when you allow yourself, you um, push through their resistance and those doubts that maybe this is kind of a selfish thing, it's not practical, um, it's not necessary. Uh, what does art do anyway? Mm. When you start thinking, when, you, when you're saying those things to yourself, you're denying yourself the gift of yourself. Because most people who think that way actually have a secret desire to express themselves artistically. Um, and I challenge anybody who listens to this podcast to, uh, to really be honest with themselves and think about, mm, do I really have that desire of expressing myself and making, you know, putting paint on a canvas and just go crazy? Think of it as a gift a gift of expression, self-expression, and a gift to the world. Even if you don't have a product to give to somebody, just the fact that you're gifting yourself that time and that space to explore yourself will be a gift to others because then you will show up much more complete in knowing yourself much better. Yes, yeah, we've got a few comments here. So Sargan says she has that desire. So, you know, she wants to get out there. And it, I think, it, like, um, I just asked, how long have you been an artist? Um, I remember the first time that one, a, a drawing of mine was published, I was six years old. It was right. published in the newspaper, the local newspaper in Lisbon. And I felt such pride that my, my drawing was there for everybody to see. Um, and, and I never stopped doing it. I never stopped drawing, um, a, a little bit of story here. Um, like most people, I've had a long journey to myself mm -hmm. and for a long time, uh, I was raised by very unconscious people. There were a, quite a few traumatic, um, uh, instances in my life that um, gave me the impression that I was not important, um, that um, I was not valid, that I had no power. However, mm -hmm. I knew that this thing that I liked doing, the drawing and the coloring and making pictures, um, got people's attention and people liked it. And so it felt like something I could handle, something that I could control, that I could use. Um, and it took me a long time to figure out how to use it in an effective way. Um, and as it happens in a lot of people's lives, transformation comes when everything goes to caca. <laughs> There's a point in your life when you think you had your life figured out, figured out, and then something happens. You know, you lose a partner or you lose um, a loved one or you lose your job. Um, anything can happen in your life. And all of a sudden, you don't know who you are. You don't know what, what life is all about. And um, you, for me, there was a a self-portrait that I did that changed everything for me. And it made me realize that everything I made, I was making happen in the world. Maybe I can share it. Can I share it? Let's see if I can. Yeah, pull I'm, I'm my not phone. sure. It's because your... it's quite a, po a powerful image. See if people can see it. You see that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. It's really amazing. Yeah. Is, it, is it painted on a stone or is it? painted to no. look like it's painted on a stone is it yeah, i know it's actually um it's chalk pastel on um on board cardboard oh right wow pastel that is amazing yeah yeah oh. and i did this um because um there was a time in my life when i really this was a time in my life when everything was just like coming to uh, a point where i couldn't stand it anymore and I wanted to paint myself in um, expensive and free way. 
So I painted myself in my own uh, Portuguese garb. It's a traditional garb. Mm -hmm. Carrying a basket, basket of, of eggs. Think of the symbol, symbolism. You know that expression, don't put all your eggs in one basket? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do, yeah. So I was producing these images kind of unconsciously, but there are a lot of meaning to it. And I am walking towards a tsunami. Mm -hmm. So what was happening, I was actually painting what my life was at the moment. I had put all of my eggs in one basket, my marriage, um, my um, motherhood, and I had neglected myself. And what I desired in that moment was for a tsunami to come and sweep everything away and bring me a new life. It's exactly that what That is actually amazing. And I think this is the thing we don't realize. Like you said, you know, art really helped you find consciousness in a lot of ways. It helped me find consciousness and, me, and um, showed me that I am a creator. Mm. I create my own reality. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about making pictures is that you're connecting your thoughts, your feelings to your hand and mm -hmm. our hand and specifically these two fingers are our most powerful tool as humans. So when you put any marking down, that's powerful. And if you make images, those images become reality because they're actually real yeah absolutely and, and I love the way that now you're aware of your journey and how you were feeling and more conscious and everything that you can look back and under interpret your own art and um and I just want to say I mean Anna is an amazing artist but as she said she had her first artwork painted at six and this doesn't mean that it's something you have to start as a child expression is inside of you and actually Sargam has a good question about expression or it's a statement but it's kind of a question I have techniques of teaching and I do it by uh, do it by heart but I want to know how to make it expressive so um, can you help her with that can you give a of few course. pointers yeah of course um, expression is a practice right everything in life is a practice um, we don't do anything um, well until we practice it. So to, we can also practice being expressive. We can uh, practice being expressive with our bodies and we can be expressive how we teach other people, mm -hmm. how we make anything, how, like you, you're being very creative in the way you are helping people with um, their presence in in social media you know you Thank you you. you pull things from everywhere Thank and you. and then that's a that's a great way to teach because coaches are teachers right and our job is to guide people towards themselves and give them the tools that they can use to express themselves so you are pulling all kinds of things from all over the place and trying different uh, ways of uh, presenting it to people because you know that people learn in different ways. So yeah. to, to learn to express yourself is a practice. And of course, I can help you, Sargam. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think, um, you know, my thing for that is it's amazing, like, what you, if you just try something creative, like I was saying, and right, you want to be more expressive. That's the goal. Start painting something without thinking logically about what the solution is and see what happens. The, the artwork isn't for you to then present to people as a masterpiece or anything. It's for you to uh, use the other side of your brain. And so yeah. when something is in the subconscious, it sits there and your brain is working by itself. And then you be more creative, a solution may come to you. Definitely work with Anna because Anna's... Um, Anna's work is amazing and she will really accelerate the process for you and help you get over any unhelpful beliefs like I had where I was always judging myself and saying that's rubbish you know like we've talked about today art is an expression and it's an expression of yourself there are so many different styles of art out there we talked about the lady with the big eyes who did the pictures with the big eyes and some people were critical I think a lot of criticism comes from jealousy and envy 
um you know so a lot of people just um you know they they don't know what they're talking about and so they judge bottom line you know they they think they, they've not let their creative side out um so i think it, you most know look at, artists, Picasso, look at all these people yeah you know? most artists did not become famous overnight in fact they were not understood right away they were criticized uh they were even vilified some of them but they persisted because they knew that this was what they needed to do in the world this is what this was their gift so that's with everything in life um, if it feels good in your heart to do something and to be in a certain way, forget about what other people say. Just do it. I wanted to mention, um, you know how people use um, vision boards? Yes. Yep. And they do cutouts of, of magazines and they arrange it. And vision boards are a way to manifest because you're putting into image your desires, mm -hmm. your dreams. Um, you can do that with your own imagery. Think how much powerful it is to use your own imagery and your own markings mm. because it comes directly from you. Um, vision boards are very powerful, but you're still using somebody else's image. Now, if you learn to use your own imagery, imagine how much more powerful that vision board is. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's like we, um, you know, something I recently learned about the connection between the mind and the brain when you use handwriting rather than typing. Um, so I, I can fully understand how as you're whatever the picture looks like, you know, as you're making your vision board with your hand and you're having to connect the mind, the mind is actually visualizing in a much stronger way than when you go, oh, I like that in the magazine, stick. I like that in a magazine stick. I mean, there's there's no connection in there. And then you're staring at this board going, oh, I can see myself there, you know, whereas actually when you're drawing, you're imagining yourself there. And that's, I think, I know, I don't think, I know is the key to manifestation is using that power of imagination to see yourself there. So, well, you know, the, the pictures don't have to be perfect, as we said, um, but it's really creating that connection, thinking about how it's going to look. Um, and I found that in a very short time through releasing those unhelpful beliefs that I wasn't good, I got better uh, very, much quicker than I thought I would, Yeah. Um, you know, and I enjoy drawing and I've drawn some things. Um, I've done some of my visualizations just in pencil, you know, like my house, how it's going to look and finishing off the inside yes. of the house. And everything. I've drawn it where all the furniture is going to be and where I'm going to put my music and my office and, uh, you know, where my daughter's going to have space, all those things. Matt, I want, uh, I want to share with you, um, that just brings up a memory for me. When I was a teenager, I used to play a game with a, uh, a girlfriend of mine. Um, and we would imagine, we would do this. We would imagine the things that are dreams, right? And because I was an artist, I would I would challenge her to draw it. And one day we decided to draw and imagine what we called our little peace place. Mm -hmm. And we drew it. She drew, you know, a house. I don't, I don't remember what her drawing was, but mine was. I don't know why it came to me. I drew um, like a cliff and a little cottage on top of that cliff and the ocean nearby. My house is that drawing. I manifested that house, that desire as an adult. I own a home up on a hill overlooking the ocean. And it's a little college and cottage, and it's a beautiful place. So that's the power of using your mind, your heart, and your body to actually make it make your dreams come true. Now, I'm not saying that things are going to solve everybody's problems, that you're going to have uh, millions of dollars, that you're going to find the love of your life. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that there's many ways to do self-development and to uh, learn to be a complete person and to help yourself be that complete person. What I'm saying is 
this is a fun way to do it. So why not? Yeah, and I think um, <laughs> maybe you won't find all those things, but you will find a lot more love for your life. You well, will... Yes, those things come when you, um, when you come. When you come into the world as a full person, fully mm -hmm. expressed person, then all of those things come to, come to you. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I mean, so I think one of the key things is that you actually, once you start to express yourself and use that side of your brain, you start to appreciate the things you see a lot more. You yes. see, see life in a more colorful, vivid way. You're not so um, lost in the past and the future and your own thoughts. You're actually looking at things and experiencing them a lot more. And so um, we've covered a lot of this, but there was, only, there was one last thing that we were going to talk about, which was your actual method of transformation and manifestation, which we've, we've talked about just now, the manifestation side of things. But so, for example, if I know you, you often do courses, but um, for somebody to work with you on a one to one basis, um, what kind of things do you how do you know, give us a brief overview of what to expect? Um, not in too much detail, obviously, because I know there's a lot involved in it. So, sure. Yeah. Well, I use a combination of methods. Um, uh, I divide it into mind, body, and, and heart or spirit. So first, I address the mind and I um, guide people to uh, uh, mindful practices. Uh, we do meditation, we do journaling, we do... Uh, not just meditation, regular meditation, but I do drawing meditation, for instance. Then I address um, uh, the body. We uh, take care of our body. We do exercise, we uh, stretch, we go for walks in nature. Walks in nature are so important. I've had the most amazing inspirations just taking a little stroll in a park mm, or at the yeah. beach, right? Mm -hmm. So I work with three parts of, of the person. Then I work with the spirit or the inspiration. Uh, I, uh, so if you were to take my whole course, it would take for a, about 12 weeks. But I've divided my, my guidance in short uh, courses. And uh, for instance, I, um, I'm going to uh, uh, announce right now, um, I'm in transition right now, I'm traveling to Italy, so it might take a few days or a week for this to happen. But I'm about to launch um, a challenge for people to, uh, to do a little journey uh, into doodling and to experience doodling um, in, in different ways. Uh, so that's one of the things I do with people. Um, I uh, guide them through doodling and automatic uh, drawing. Uh, then I do some emotional work with, with color mixing. Um, I also guide people uh, in deconstructing and reconstructing themselves from, from the roots up. And there's a very particular method that I use. I use union methods, uh, um, archetype exploration. So it really depends on what you want to work on and how, where you're at in your, uh, in your exploration. Um, I can work with groups or I can work with people individually. Um, and if you work with me individually, I cater to you, to your uh, needs, what it is that you really want to do and what you want to focus on. So yeah, my methods are varied. We're not just uh, making pictures, we're developing the whole person. Yeah. We do it in a fun way. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I couldn't agree more that that is what your work is about, is really uh, uncovering things um, positive things about yourself and the, the, um, learning the things that you can do um, rather than the things you can't uh, through creativity and expression. And yeah. so there's been some really interesting comments, actually. I'm just going to have to scroll back through. So um, Sargam again said, hold on, where is it? So um, 
very true. When you put your heart and mindfulness into some work, it becomes magic. And I think magic is a really good word there. Yes. Yeah. Once you, uh, once you it just, is magic. <laughs> once you um, just get into it and uh, get into art and then start expressing yourself more or just creativity. Like we say, we're using the word art because it's painting, it's drawing, it's these things, but we, the goal isn't to become an artist here, although you could. But uh, like I've mentioned, Anna's been, an art, been producing art for decades now. And, yeah, um, and if you yeah. are already an artist or if you're exploring art already, mm -hmm. um, I can help you mm -hmm. find that visual language that's all yours. So every artist has a particular language. Mm. So if you're struggling with your artwork and you're not quite sure what direction you want to go or, you know, you have artist's block, like writers have writer's block, I can help you get through that and and clear the way for your own um, for your own self to to come through. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things that I know from working with you is that you do work with a lot of artists and specifically um, you help them get through blocks. You help them become more consistent. And, you know, like I even like I was saying, they stop judging themselves and, you know, be just let it become free and you've had you know the the people that you've worked with so far have had some amazing results uh with those um with being more creative even after having years of art experience and being artists for a long time uh which is great um so there's another comment from uh brian here and uh yeah brian is watching us there's quite a few people been watching us today it's been a great uh, day it provides an excellent entrainment principle for driving your goals and actions into congruency. So he's talking about the manifestation that we we're talking about. And yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, Karen um, says, um, my language is doodles. Yeah, which we mentioned earlier. Yeah, how much fun are doodles? And Yes, you know, I know Karen and her doodles. She's got great doodles. <laughs> She's right, great awesome. Yeah, I think some people don't realize <laughs> that even doodles can be art, you know, and doodles yes. can be the start of art even and becoming I, an artist. Yeah, and they don't I, I, did that, I did that whole series of, um, I was sick with, with um, COVID for two weeks and it was not fun. And I was bored out of my mind in my house. And I was at a time that I didn't really know what I was doing artistically. I was trying to figure out um, a new direction. And that happens to every artist. And a friend of mine suggested, why don't you just do a watercolor a day? Because watercolors are not don't require a lot of physical um, uh, energy. You mm -hmm. know, watercolors are, are fun. And I decided to do, um, but I didn't really know what I wanted to draw or paint. So I started doing doodles, one doodle a day. And I didn't have any idea what I was, I was just letting my hand do what I wanted to do. And then I would come in and I put a little bit of color here, a little bit of color there. And in 14 days, I did 14 doodles and they were amazing. I sold them all. Right. Wow. Well, oh, yeah. People like them so much that I sold all of them. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that, that just goes to show you, doesn't it? You know, it's just letting no idea, no actual focus, just letting the creativity flow. And suddenly, you know, you've got art and even better, you've got an income from that art. And even better, that art's connecting with other people and really making them think. Yes. You know, and it, them helped me. it helped me get through uh, the 15, 14 days that I was forced to stay by myself. And I could have gone into depression. Um, a lot of people have, that's happened to a lot of people who've gotten sick with, with this virus. But because I was engaged in a creative process and the creative process, the main ingredient is curiosity. I decided, right. myself, I decided to let myself to be curious for an hour each day and see what happens. And yes, it helped me get through it. And yes, of course, people loved it and I made some money. What else can you want? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we've got a really interesting comment here from Brian again. He says, I teach, because I asked him what he, uh, are you an artist? And he replied, I teach sorcery 
So using these methods to creation, in, to create intentional signals, I think it is, as the root of the alchemic great work, maybe it's signals, I don't know what that means. Uh, this is a treat to see the different use of this, these methods. So he's implying that the methods he uses in sorcery are very similar to the methods you're using. Oh, absolutely. It's uh, alchemy. Yeah, yeah he, alchemy. He is alchemy. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, for the people who are really into woo-woo stuff, that might mean something. Other people will go, ah, that sounds like magic, and I don't know about magic. Um, don't worry about it. <laughs> It's just fun to do it. Nothing bad is going to happen. And also, mm -hmm. when you, um, that expression, be careful what you wish for. I don't really like it because it implies that you should not have any wishes. And that's BS. Because um, wishing is what makes things happen. Mm -hmm. So what I say is, be prepared for what you wish for. And by being prepared, I mean be intentional. Mm. And you can be very, very intentional when you use art to bring things into your life that you really wish in your heart. And that's yeah. the magic. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, what's interesting is that Brian is really loving this. And um, there's still quite a few people watching, but Brian's... Uh, really get um, got involved and he actually just basically commented exactly what you said at the same time <laughs> you should be free to wish to your heart's content um uh, but he's a few minutes behind us so there's definitely <laughs> some uh, synchronicity hey. going on here yeah so loving that yeah really thank you everybody um we're not so i think we've like covered pretty much everything we came here to cover so i just want to tell you a little bit about anna so anna is an artist and she's been an artist for many years and she has a website anadoria.com where you can see a lot of her art that's been all yeah. over the place but also if you want to talk to her um specifically she's offering a personal a complimentary personal consultation to anyone who's watched this today or watches this in the future and you can find the link in the description above this video so you can get to her other website which is adoria.training but it's easy to follow the link above the uh, video here um she has helped many people artists business people people with depression um people just you know wanting to get more out of their lives with her methods you can find purpose you can find your vision you can become more creative you can build consistency as an artist or even as a person um, and express yourself not to mention the alchemy the manifestation and all the other things that you can use once you connect your left and right brain with your hand um so really anna it's been lovely to have you here today i'm just going to check the comments um so yeah thank you thank you just to mention a couple of people have said how great you are anna and they love working oh, with you here thank in the comments. um so thank you all for uh watching and this has been the first food for thought. We will be on every Friday, not me and Anna, but we'll probably be back because I think this is a really um, interesting topic. I'm sure we could talk about it more. I can't so, wait. Um, I can't next wait. Friday, I'll be back probably at a different time, but I'll schedule the event and invite everybody who came today and everybody else who may want to come and watch. So thank you, Anna. I'm going to end the live stream now and then we can talk for a minute. And everybody else, have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Matt.